because here's the thing, a rising tide lifts all boats. Am I correct on that? Should we all want to rise together? Can we work together to get that done? Are you absolutely alone in your pursuit or are you going to leverage your team? You guys got what it takes. I would ask myself if I were you, how can I double what I did this year next year? If it's, I just work harder, I'm just gonna hustle, I'm just gonna grind more. I've done the 18 hour days and I did it for over a decade. It will take you somewhere, but it'll take you there miserable. I promise you. Leveraged, how can you leverage the relationships? How can you leverage an assistant? How can you leverage your family? Hey honey, I'm gonna be gone next week for two days. I'm gonna hit six schools. I'm gonna get this many recruitments and this is how it's gonna affect our life because I know my numbers, I know my close rate. And when she sees that, she's gonna be happy when you're going out to doing it. Not, oh crap, I forgot to tell you. I'm gonna be gone tonight. Leverage, thinking, forecasting, good checks and balances, communication. All of these things that have helped me build businesses, helped me become a world champion athlete. And by the way, I'm just a product of everybody I had around me as an athlete. This guy, he trained me. My wife motivated me and pushed me every time I wanted to quit. And guess what? There was a lot of times I wanted to quit. I was compelled not to be a broke cowboy, beat up physically, beat up mentally, thinking about the glory days in the past. Your guys' best day is ahead of you. It's not behind you. Once you begin to start to have the financial means to be able to have new experiences, to be able to have fun, do things, go get them. Go chase new experiences, do new things. When I was learning Portuguese, I would fly down to Brazil by myself, not knowing where I was gonna go. I don't wear the bright pink shirt, I can promise you that. I'm deathly scared of heights. Can anybody see what I'm doing back here? I jumped out of a dadgum plane. It was a good plane. I didn't know about the parachute. New experiences. Man, they will keep your life fresh. They will keep your life fun. New cultures, new people, new experiences, new things. We travel all over the world. A year and a half ago, I did a Navy SEAL Hell Week. I trained for four months. I blew my knee up rodeoing, and I was going to be unable to compete for a big part of the season, and I mentally was in a really bad place because I always leaned on my training as my rock. Had a bad day? Oh, heck, we'll just train extra hard. I think it's because of my childhood was a little bit chaotic. I like the pain. I like testing myself. I think a good, healthy test is a good thing. So I say, you know what? I've been posting for 10 years that I'm Mr. Motivation, Mr. Mindset. Why not put my feet to the fire and actually see if I got what it takes? Well, I make excuses. Oh, I got a cramp. Oh, I'm down. A lot of guys did. Oh, my knee hurts. Oh, I just come off COVID during that. Like three days after I was cleared from COVID, I went to that. New experiences. 49 guys signed up, 23 completed. Which person in this picture do you think actually made it through this simulated Navy SEAL Hell Week? One on the right, you. Which one didn't? I'm going to say the guy on the far left. What do you think's going on in this guy's head right now? I want to quit. I want to be done. This hurts. I've been in the ocean for 12 hours, freezing my tail off in 30 mile an hour winds in November. You have to tie it to a deeper why. Because when you think to yourself, I can't do another appointment, I can't take another rejection. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. One of my good friends who is a lead instructor, not my friend during Hell Week, uh, his name is Ray Kerr. Go follow him on social media if you want to. He is a bad dude, and he can be very mean. Cracked my Adam's apple, as a matter of fact, choking me out. And uh, now we're great friends. But he told me, he said, son, all you have to do is not quit. That's it. Block it out. Don't quit. Tie it to something deeper. I couldn't stand the fact of going home to my wife and kids and telling them that I quit. I quit. I rang the bell once to give up on myself, once to give up on my team, and once to give up on my country. Not happening. I'm going to ask you guys, you, you ring the bell? Will you give up? Will you quit? Or will you tie it to a much deeper reason for staying in the game? Service, family, love, compassion. You know, they think guys like this are all the real guys. This was a play day. I'm not a real guy. But the real guys are the smartest, the kindest, the most intellectual guys, all the SEALs that I know, incredible human beings. But they can block it out when they need to because of their why, their service to their family. How many of us got kids in here? Almost everybody. 
let me ask you a question. Would you allow your kid to come here? You would, wouldn't you? I would send my son here in a heartbeat. My son was like, hey, dad, I want to be a diesel mechanic. Hey, dad, I want to have an upholstery shop. Hey, dad, I want to do this. I know where you're going, son. I would send him here. Look at this place. You can eat off the floor. You can eat off the floor in this place. Do you think it's like this everywhere? How many shops in your hometowns look like this? Clean, nice. That shows respect, grit, obedience, discipline. All the things that you need to be the most amazing person that you can. Nobody is any different. I've never met a president. Uh, Don Trump Jr., I had a conversation with him on the phone, made him a belt buckle. By the way, that's a good way to get close to people is by standing out and doing little things that nobody else will do because then they remember you, so stand out. Uh, but I've been able to meet, you know, billion-dollar CEOs, presidential candidates, so mega celebrities. They're no different than you. They're no different than you. They just don't let the distractions roll around in their head. That's the difference. They keep working. They have a why. They know why they're doing it. They're passionate. They're hungry. They're pushing. They're motivation. So if you think to yourself, oh, I'm just, I don't have what they have, that's BS. You have exactly what you need to have to get the job done. Tie it to something so deep. Does anybody know what this is? Yes. Shoes from the Holocaust. This picture really bothers me. It bothers my soul to think that things like this could happen and that are still happening right now. Each one of those shoes had a soul, not the one on the bottom, like a soul, a human being lived in it. These people didn't have the opportunity to come here. These people had it ripped away from them. The skills, the brilliance, the knowledge, the things that they didn't even get to develop, you have the opportunity to give to these other people. If some of these kids, some of these young human beings don't get a skill, this could happen to them. Whether it's gang violence, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, this could happen. The man who pointed that out to me is Governor Huckabee, presidential candidate, 2008, 2016. He's a very close friend of mine, and we've been on his show. My wife performed. She got to sing one of her songs with him playing bass. It was a fun thing. But be like this man. This man I look up to. This man I just cherish. He is strong, but he's kind. He's wise. He's brilliant. You're never going to read in the news about how he slept with his secretary, did something disgusting. He is somebody that I look at, I say, I want to be like that. Each and every one of you have that opportunity to do that. And also to have somebody look at you that way. I am only here because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. Like I said, my wife, my trainers, my sponsors, the people that believed in me, the people that pushed me. And I just kept saying yes. One more day. Yeah, I tore my hamstring, but I got to go compete tomorrow. That's fine. One more day. I'll get through it. Yeah, I went to 26 competitions in a row and didn't win anything. That's about 40 days and didn't win anything. That's my personal number. We all have that number. I struck out this many times. I did this, I did that. That number doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that you're willing to go out and face one more day, willing to take one more step, willing to push a little bit harder than you did before and leverage, for the love of Jesus, leverage your relationships. Make that call. We all have those calls that we know we're supposed to make. I didn't get to it today. We didn't get to it today because there was busy work. Get rid of the busy work, delegate it to somebody and go make more money making the call than you would doing the dishes. You all have this opportunity. I believe it. And some of you are ballers. I mean, I look across this room, there's so much wisdom and so much knowledge and so many people that could just get around each other. Because here's the thing, a rising tide lifts all boats. Am I correct on that? Should we all want to rise together? Yes. Can we work together to get that done? Yes. Are you absolutely alone in your pursuit or are you going to leverage your team? Leverage that knowledge. Ask questions. When you're young, you have all kinds of time, but you don't have any skills. When you're older, you don't have as much time, but you have a ton of knowledge. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, let's you and me make a deal. Let's shake hands. Yeah, that good, firm cowboy handshake. If you like this video, do me a favor. Share it with somebody. Subscribe to the channel. And my end of the bargain, I will bring you everything I know about being a high performer, a world champion, and an entrepreneur. If that sounds like a fair deal, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment too, because I'm going to answer every single comment that comes in on this video. If I'm going to leave you with one thing that I think can transform everybody's business, life, whether it's personal, financial. If you are constantly in pursuit of somebody ahead of you, you introduce yourself, you make yourself known, and you stand out.
within the first 10 seconds, if you stand out to that person within the first 10 seconds, and then you follow up like monster follow up, like you don't let them away. Hey, here's a book, you know, I know you love hunting. Here's a book about bows. This guy wrote, I wanted to send it to you, send him something. I send people belt buckles all the time. I do that all the time. I am in their inbox. I'm commenting on their social media. These people will then get to know, like, and trust you, and they will help you through knowledge. The quickest way to get from A to B is through time collapsing. Taking somebody's knowledge and learning it, but doing it strategically so that you can get to A to B much faster. Now, as a professional athlete, I could have went and did it myself, which is what a lot of guys do, and guess what? Most of them fail. I would say 95 to 98% fail. Don't make it. Why did I make it? My dad was a trainer, so I got that knowledge. When I see that knowledge wasn't there for the mindset, I had to go seek somebody else. I got there. I made myself known to him. I worked for the guy that taught me the mindset for a year and a half for free, for free, no paycheck. Then after that, I meet Jay Novacek. I say, hey, Jay, love what you do. I want to be a world champion. I know you're the man to get me there. I'll do whatever it takes. Guess who got to work with the world champ? Three times. I did. I gave him a saddle. I did kind things for him. Uh, when his wife's sick, I check on her. I, I bring flowers. Like I actually genuinely care, but I know that the knowledge that they have is gonna put me in warp speed to get where I wanna go. Everybody here has a skill, time collapse. Be strategic on the relationships you have. Be kind, nice, courteous, care about them, but show that you're more valuable to them than everybody else who just wants to suck from them. Look at the statistics in America right now. Did you know that 57% of Americans can't get their hands on $1,000 right now if they needed to? 57%. That's not even an ER visit. Most of those people have kids. America needs you to stand out and step up. I would challenge you, be more vocal on your social media. And you have to do it through triggering emotion through your social media. You don't do it, you could tell the stories of the young man or the young woman, but then you also need to trigger the emotion of these people to get them to take action. Facts tell, stories sell. And guys, I'm gonna leave you with that. I wanna open it up to a Q&A. I went longer than I wanted to. I apologize if I bored you to death. I always hated it in school and I'd be back there trying to sleep and uh, the teacher was trying to teach me something. <laughs> but does anybody have any questions specifically? Marketing is one way that I've grown my businesses, grown my personal brand. That's something I know quite a bit about. I don't know everything, but I've really spent a ton of time in social media, email marketing, text marketing, follow-up marketing. If there's any questions at any point, holler, please. Yeah. So I'm not good with social media. How do you get them to follow you? So just quick reference. I've been doing social media for 2013, really. is kind of when I started. And I got to think, I was like, how can I connect with people in, on a deeper level but, and get them to follow me, but not care about the number? Because here's the deal. I've got friends that have 10,000 followers that make $40 million a year. I have maybe 800,000 followers. I don't make $400 million a year or $40 million a year. It's not about the number of followers, but the quality of the follower. So your number one thing is, how do I attract the type of individual that I want to position to? How do you do that? The young man or woman, if they like this kind of stuff, what would you post about to get them to start following you? Loud cars. <laughs> Loud cars, baby. Yeah. Loud cars, muscle cars, car reviews. I want you to connect to the young man that you used to be. That's how you get the followers. It's about posting, but it's about quality of posts. Now, I have posted thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Some of them get no likes. Even with 800,000 followers, I still get like, very few likes on some of them, but some of them pop off. My thing for you would be, how can I post two or three times a week, but like spend an hour, create a nice post, review a car, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and then post it and ask a question. Just so you know, on Facebook, you cannot ask the question because the algorithm will tank your engagement. On Instagram, you can ask questions because it drives engagement up. Remember that. So when you're typing in the caption, just type it in a little different. Fast cars. Talk about horsepower. These don't have to be your cars. Go to a car show. Ask the owner, hey, tell me the story about this car. There's a guy on Instagram going around right now that's just blown up. He's like, what is the best piece of advice that you would tell your younger self? 
follow your passion. Your passion is always right. That will guide you more than school will, anybody's opinions will. If you can follow your gut, you don't have to follow anything else. And this dude is blowing up millions of followers. So you have to understand the cognitive biases of the young men. A young man really wants a girlfriend, enough cash to have fun and a fast car. That's really what a young man wants. Most young men, almost 100% of the young men that are here, that's what they want. So that's the kind of content you have to create. And, and let's say you're a female. How would you do it that way? Um, I've got cars. <laughs> I got fast cars. <laughs> Okay, so we got cars, but if you don't connect to a young male demographic, the only way to do it, number one, is to show your body, which is not gonna work, right? You don't wanna connect with a young male by doing that, so you're not gonna do that. But how you could do that is you could do car reviews, you could have a faceless channel, there's a ton of those out there that just drive traffic. I've got friends that have Instagrams that are three, four, five million followers, they don't even show their face. They just talk about the car, and then the guy likes it. And they use hashtag research to get more people in because they know people are searching hashtags and they optimize their SEO. So you could have a faceless channel if it's like, oh, I don't want my face to be on it. You could do the same thing. But it's all about getting the reps in, understanding the cognitive biases of a young man or a young woman that wants to come to this program and then positioning social out there in front of them. And if you're trying to do everything yourself, you can't do it all. You have to leverage a team. You have to take yourself to areas you don't understand and know, and then build on that skill little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. And then once you know it like the back of your hand, I'm sure if I went to Brian and I said, Brian, I want you to transform me in nine months. I need to know everything to do. I need to know the diets. I need to know the exercise. I need to know the movements. I need to know how to do it without destroying my joints or my ligaments. He could probably show me how to do it because he's been there, he's done that. Marketing is the same way. Social media is the same way. Reps, 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 reps. I've been posting to YouTube. I started long form content for the first time a few months ago and it has been hard because I put like 10 hours in a video and it gets 200 views. I'm like, ugh, come on. Like, how is this even possible? It's supposed to be amazing right off the bat. But guess what? I don't care. I decided I'm gonna make the videos anyway I'm just gonna keep posting them. I'm gonna keep learning about SEO. I'm gonna keep learning about marketing and I'll look at it in five years and see what happens. Guess what happens in five years? You guys can come back and hold me accountable. We're on camera. In five years, it's gonna be big because I'm gonna figure it out because I won't quit and neither should you. Any other questions? I was just gonna say, so in 2013, your life changed dramatically over the last 10 years. How do you keep that going now that it's 2023? How do you keep that growth and and how do you tell us, so Steel has a lot of success, how do we prevent Steel from falling backwards and getting into a rut? That is an incredible question. You know what, it's one I had to deal with a lot over the last couple of years. With three children, it is now impossible for me to be a full-time rodeo athlete and be a good dad. That's hard. 250, 300 days a year on the road while trying to raise three kids and be present for soccer and basketball and swim and all this stuff, it's not possible. I hit a massive, I would say slump in my life because my identity was this rodeo guy. And the moment you're not on TV every day and you're not doing all the interviews and you're not getting all that stuff, it can be very difficult. And the other thing is, it's easy to get comfortable when you get just a little bit of money. That's why your motivation cannot only be about money. It has to be a, to service of others. It has to be tied to something deeper than just the check. It really does. And if you're a person who's struggling with getting the momentum and getting the ball rolling, I have something amazing for you. It's called the Cowboy Challenge. Down in the description below, I want you to accept the challenge, the Cowboy Challenge, to give you momentum, to give you resiliency, to give you mental toughness, to go on and chase life. And you can check that out. There's also a ton of free stuff in the description below. I have never seen a school like this. I've been to a lot of them. I speak at a lot of colleges. I'm a college dropout. I would not have dropped out of this. This kind of stuff would speak my language. I can frame a house, I can weld, I can build fence, I can run a water line, I can kind of fix a motor if it's basic, but I like getting my hands dirty. But the thing is, is it has to be to something deeper. When you're young, it's about, I wanna be the biggest one, I wanna be the best, I wanna make money. As you get older, it should transition to a place of purpose. Why do I speak now? I don't need this money. I wanna help people. It's because I feel a passion in my heart 
to spread the word of the cowboy and motivation and to help people overcome these little tricks in their head that they have. How many of you get out of bed in the morning for your family? If your son or your daughter said, hey, I, I'm really, I need some help, please help me. They called you there in a bind. Maybe they were somewhere very dangerous and they needed some help. Would you say no? No. Laziness is saying no to all these kids. That's how you continue to push. You have to reinvent it. In the beginning, it may be for money, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because I've been poor. For a long period of my life, I was poor. Until I was about 30, I was broke because everything it, I had went into buying more horses, buying more trucks, buying more trailers. I didn't understand leverage. I thought I had to pay cash for everything. I didn't do financing. I just was zero all the time. Then I understood leverage. I was like, okay, well now I can leverage relationships. Now I can actually borrow money from a bank. What? This is crazy. Now I can utilize this to grow my brand and my image and I'm gonna do it to lift and motivate and push and inspire people. Now for over 10 years, I've been doing that on social media. I've been speaking, I've been talking, I've been going to junior rodeos, I've been going to high school rodeos, I've been going to colleges. My why continually changes. It's always shifting. And sometimes when it's really, really, really hard, there was one moment I wanted to quit in the Hell Week deal. It was after I had broken three ribs, I had cracked my Adam's apple. I had been knocked out by a guy by getting hit in the face. It's funny how that happens. And I thought the instructors were just really wanting to like kill us. And actually one person did die. It wasn't my class, it was three classes ahead, a guy died, had a heart attack. I thought the instructors didn't like me. I took everything personal. And I kept that little loop in my head, they don't like me, they're putting me in positions to fail. Even if I do good, they tell me I fail. They do all this stuff. And that was playing over and over and over in my head. And I was army crawling. We'd been army crawling through uh, desert like weeds and cactus and stuff in Southern California and blood was just running out of my elbows and my stomach and my chest and my knees and I made it all about me. If you ever get to the point where you're going to coast, it's usually because it's all about you. When I thought about my son, my daughter, and telling them that I would have to go home and be a quitter, no way. I would go to the grave before I quit. When I took it and I flipped it in my head to where it wasn't about me, but it was about them, I went exponentially farther than I thought I could. And that's how you have to reinvent yourself. No matter what stage we're in, the why shifts, changes, it becomes about your family, it becomes about your kids, it becomes about the next chapter, it becomes about service to a church, to an organization. I had to reevaluate my why as I started slowing down competing, because I know as an athlete, I'm still good enough. I'm 40, I, I not only can hang with the 20 year olds, I can beat them a large percentage of the time, just because of discipline. But my why had to change and it went to charity. I went to Mexico last March and my wife and I started funding an orphanage down there for trafficked children. And I wanted to meet the kids and I want to talk to them about the cowboy lifestyle, the cowboy in pink. and how their future is so much brighter than their past. There was no cameras, no TV, there's no nothing. I just went down and did it. And that then became my new passion. And then Sound of Freedom comes out and I'm like, whoa, when you tie it to something deeper than yourself, I'm telling you, there will be no way you can quit. Any other questions? Questions, questions, questions? Are we doing good? Come on. We gotta leave with some energy, come on. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you all, and I know you'll go out and serve. My only goal for this video is to add value to your life. And guess what? If I add value to your life, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, and share this video. And also, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you think this video rocks, let me know. If you have a topic that you want me to cover another video on, leave it in the comments below. These videos are made to make you better. So I want to serve you at the highest level. If you want to watch another amazing video, check this one out right here. I know that it will serve your life. Take care. Adios.